right. How are you doing? Terrific. Good. It's a great weekend. Yeah, it's fun, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, oh, I get to drive home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're local now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you love living back in the city? I've got to say I do. Yeah. The weather is so great. I love the weather. Yeah. yeah. Did you, did you like that heat wave we had? Loved it. Did you really? You like the that? polar vortex. You love the polar vortex? Drama. Wow. Yeah, bring it to me. <laughs> yeah, it's fabulous. It's so, um, so you grew up in Chicago? Yes. In yeah, what part? The north side, by the big beach on Ardmore. We used to call it Ardmore Beach. I think they call it something else now. But yeah, that was my backyard. That oh, North that's beautiful. Beach. That's beautiful. That's uh, I know your parents. Your parents are awesome. Thank you. Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. Uh, really cool people. Uh, so, Chicagoan, uh, uh, how did you get into it? Because I feel like I'm looking backwards. Oh. There we go. Oh, okay. Um, yes? Uh, how did you get into acting? Um, well, my parents did a lot of theater. It, Chicago's great, and for those of you who are from here, in that they, there's a great community theater scene, and each park, there's tons of parks, and each park has a, had a, I don't know if they still do it, but back in the 60s, 70s, whatever, they, each park had its own sort of dramat, you know, and people used to do plays, and then the best of those plays would go on during the summer at Theater on the Lake. And my dad and my mom both did that quite a lot, and so my brother and I grew up, you know, at cast parties and cueing them on their parts and all this kind of stuff, so that kind of got us into the theater world, and I also loved movies, so all oh, we did, we saw tons of films, you know? Yeah. And then, I don't know, then I went to college and was gonna be a, a, an English major, but then I just fell in with the drama people, and I thought, oh, it was too familiar, too fun, and, and so I just fell in step. You mentioned your brother, your brother is Billy Zane, her brother is Billy Zane. You can applaud Billy Zane. <laughs> Did you guys act together a lot as kids? No, never. Seriously? Never acted once. Not even at, well, we were in a, in a movie together, but we didn't even have a scene together, so we have still as, as yet. What movie were you in together? Femme for Tall. Oh, Femme, yes, of course. I was the runaway bride, and he was the best friend, and Colin Firth was the, the guy in between, so there was a scene with him, a scene with me, a scene with him, but we never actually acted Oh, that's together. great. That's great. So, um, <laughs> let's get into, let's let's cover, let's cover Freddie first, okay? Okay. Uh, uh, you know, I actually, uh, we, you, we, you and I like knew each other when you booked it. Really, was that what it was? Yeah, it was like that was. That's how long ago it was. Mm -hmm. Like you, you booked it, and I, and I remember telling you, and you said, "Yeah." I said, "Your life's going to change. Like yeah. your life is going to change because you are going to be part of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise." It didn't change till recently because of these these cons are fairly recent for me anyway. You started doing this recently. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how'd you get? How'd you get the part? I was offered the part. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And it was right after Red and Flint's, and then I got a call and I said, you know, do you want to be Freddie's daughter and kill him? And I was like, well, <laughs> um, hold on. And so I called my friend Vanya, who knows everything. You know, she's wise and all things. I said, Vanya, what should I do? And she said, are you kidding me? I'm going to take that part because, because horror fans never die. They'll never forget you. They'll be with you forever. And I was like, all right. So I did it. And you're told me to do it. Weekend. I know, and, it, and I'm so glad I did because yeah. you know it has. It's been sort of usually peaks on giving. It's the only one in the series directed by a woman, yes, which is Rachel nice. Tyler. Yeah. yeah. That is great. Yeah. Um, what was the shoot like? What was, what was it like? It was grueling. I mean, I or it was the, the only movie I've ever worked on where I worked every single day all day. And that's like 10 weeks, and that was intense, you know, to get up to speed. Uh, and it was very, you know, full on, very engaging. The 3D stuff was fun, you know, it was a laugh. Yeah. The, the, the cast was a laugh too. I mean, we had Roseanne and Tom, and, you know, Alice Cooper, and oh, Johnny Depp, and yeah. um, who else we have? Um, oh, you have a ton of cameos. Oh, you have Yafet Koto, and lots of cool people in it. So there was, you know, no end of interesting conversation in the makeup chair. In the last uh, Q&A here with the, with, the, with the ladies from Dream Master, uh, the special effects stuff, how did that work for you? You didn't have any really insane no. stuff, like you didn't turn into a cockroach and get crushed or anything No, I didn't like that. do that, but I do, re I do recall, I will never forget the smell of that, whatever, that Freddie, you know, had to put on for hours, copious hours every day, and constantly having to retouch that. 
plastic smell is like very specific. Yeah. But I, no, I didn't have to. I didn't have to do anything. Yeah, any me. insane stuff? No. Um, no. What's it like to work with Rob Engel? Oh, I'm sure everyone says the same thing. He's just a blast. He's funny. He's generous. He's a real thespian, real um, actor's actor. You know, he's got great stories. Um, you know, always upbeat, even when he's you know hanging from some crane for hours at a time. He keeps everybody laughing. He kind of hosts the set. You know, it's terrific. Was the three D stuff shot in a sp at a specific time during the shoot? Was it last, or or did they sprinkle it through? The film. I'm trying to remember. I think it was a particular time, like somewhere in the middle, uh, and they, they rolled out this big 3D contraption, this big old camera. It was different than the other camera. Maybe it just had an attachment on it. And they, you know, they just said, you know, okay, so thrust this thing at the lens. Right. Just thrust at the lens. I, like, there was a baseball bat or something. And so, you know, it's just little things like that. It was pretty easy. It wasn't, it was kind of low tech. Did you, did, did you see a lot of 3 three movies when you were a kid? Uh-uh. Oh, you did? No, I don't think so. I think it was a little before my time. Oh, okay. Well, I, 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 I did a lot, a lot of sort of uh, re-releases when I was a kid, so yeah. I saw House of Wax in 3D. Oh, and you did? Yeah. Oh, and the 3D wasn't very good. It is now, of course, it's amazing. Yeah. No, uh, because it's of amazing. technology, but when you had the, the it's red... Charming. It's charming. Yeah. I, and I remember seeing... Um, Freddie's dad, and when it's like, you're, now put on your 3D glasses now, because it's the last, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, last 10 minutes of the film yeah. is in 3D, so you gotta well, sit the there with- the character Maggie puts on- Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still remember that and, and thought it was very funny. So did, uh, tell me about the, the, the reception uh, of the film on, uh, from your end. When it, it first came out? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, I was not aware that I was, you know, a young actress in town, I just moved on to the next thing. I was, I didn't quite look back very often, you know, and so, but I think, you know, I've noticed that it had done really well, and I remember seeing it at the Chinese theater. I was doing a play at the time, I think, um, in town tomorrow, I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah, sure. And um, so I brought some of my my um, castmates to come see it at the at the Chinese theater, you know. Oh, that's cool. So that was fun, but that was about it. That's all I really remember of it. Then I was on to the next thing. On the next thing. And then, and then, but years later. Yeah, years still, later, it's, I never dreamed it would still be. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it opened on Friday the 13th. Did it? It did, September 13th, 1991. I just, I, I remember, uh, because I had just, uh, a girl just broke up with me the day before. <laughs> and, uh, no, it's happened a lot, don't, don't go. Oh. <laughs> um, but I remember going to see it with a friend of mine, and uh, we had tipped a few because I was, you know, not feeling good. And I thought it was the greatest movie I'd ever seen in my life. No, well, it made me very happy. I was in a really shitty mood, and so. I was like, hey, this is great, you know what I mean? Freddie kills some Yeah, and I knew you, and I was like, hey, look, she's oh. gonna kill Freddie, it's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, but it was, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's really, it's really a lot of fun to see, to see those films, and I'm sure it's a lot of fun to be um, a, a part of it. Definitely. Um, okay, you mentioned Bad Influence. That is one of my favorite movies. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's, it's, yeah, it's really, <laughs> Um, the late great Curtis Hansen, who was taken from us way too soon, who was a remarkable filmmaker, who made so many great thrillers and so many smart films. Um, how did that part come to you? Um, I had done a movie called Heart of Dixie. Oh, sure. Which Steve Tisch, who was the producer of Bad Influence, had produced as well. We were all down in Mississippi together. I had a smallish part. Isn't Virginia in that too? Yes, yeah. Virginia's in it, and all the girls are in it. Phoebe Cates, right. Ali Sheedy. It's a, it's a really cute movie. I liked it. Hmm. It was um, a blast being down in Mississippi, and we did it. Anyway, um, so I guess he remembered me from that, brought me in for, for a bad influence, and I just had a few auditions and got it. Yeah. Now, Curtis was terrific because he was a real student of film, and so we could talk about old movies all day long, you know. He said, no, you. I want you to be kind of a, like, I look in me in La Noche Junta. I was like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, you, know, uh, you know, or he would say, watch Louise Brooks, I've seen it all. Don't <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know, it was great. It was great. I felt, he, I felt like we were, I don't know, on the same level in that, in terms of loving old movies. Yeah. One of the many, many things I love about the movie is it's just such a beautifully crafted film um, and full of surprises. I love, and I, t I told you this the other day, I love like the reverse casting. Like, oh, yeah. Rob Lowe plays the bad guy, James Spader plays the innocent guy. Yeah. Who would have thought that? And um, and their dynamic together was great. And it just builds intention and builds intention. What was it like to work with those two guys? Great. You know, we were all young together. Yeah. You know, we just were like young kids together, basically, cracking up and, you 
you know, having a good time, going out to clubs and doing whatever. It was fun. Yeah. It was really fun. Um, yeah, they're terrific actors. They were, yeah. It's, uh, the, the, the releasing of that movie uh, was a little interesting. Because it got released right around the time Rob Lowe's videotape. Oh yeah. <laughs> and there's a videotape in the movie. There's a movie. And I remember when it came out, I'm just saying how it was received through the press. It was like when Bad Influence came out, it was like, oh, there's a sex tape in Bad Influence. So I think people went to see it just out of curiosity. Maybe, yeah. yeah. But it was just weird how those things tied on. But it's a, but it, it's a really, a really uh, a really great film. And you are so good in it. No, you're great. You're really great. And a nice outfit or two. Yeah, no, you look great. It was everything about it. Was and great. James Bader had just won the Palm d'Or for Sex Lies and Video. Oh, he did. More yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's he did. what was exciting about yeah. it in terms of like, so, so, it's such a specific time, my God. Yeah, yeah. It's so crazy. Um, okay, I want to mention. You know, you've done a lot of movies and you've done a lot of TV work. You were on one of my favorite TV shows, like an unsung TV show that lasted, I think, one season or a season and a half. You were in Profit. Less than one season, yeah. seven episodes. I <laughs> loved that show. For the, have you guys ever seen the show Prophet with Adrian Paz? Already slept in a closet. Yeah, oh, it's in a box. In a box, yeah, but yeah, and it very was, much ahead of its time, I think. Oh, absolutely. Who was the creator of that show? Do you remember? Yeah, um, uh, John uh, McNamara, John McNamara, and May oh, right now. Yeah, ah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. On the spot, but that was it. Was on Fox and and like many Fox yeah. shows, David. Um, Ah, damn, it. damn it! I'm old. Um, David Greenwald. There it is, David oh. Greenwald. Right, exactly. Sorry, David. <laughs> but uh, but Fox has this history of taking shows off the air before they needed to be taken off. Yeah, the air. Yeah, this should have happened like ten years later. It's such then a. Who would have if, you, if you can, I think there's a DVD set up. Oh, totally. Yeah, if you've not seen this show, seriously, it, like, as you said, it's way ahead of its time, mm -hmm. and it would fit in. To the zeitgeist right so now. So much, yeah. Um, so you guys check it out. It's called Profit. They thought it was too dark. It, it, well, yeah. And by that's, today's standards, it, yeah. it's really that's one, of the re <laughs> that, that's one of the reasons why I loved it so much. Yeah. I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah, yeah. So, and you were terrific. Thank you. Great. Um, let, let's, I want to get into some of the other things that you do. Photography. Let's talk about your photography. Oh, that's fairly new. I mean, it's not new in that I've always taken pictures, but I just happened to be offered a, a solo show just a couple of months ago, and it was really exciting. So, <laughs> Of, of negatives, and it's all 35 millimeter, you know, prints and stuff. Um, pull all these, these, this treasure trove of negatives out of my storage space and blow them up and hang them up, and people really like them, so I'm gonna keep doing that. Are, do you still? Do you, do you oh, oh, yeah, all absolutely. the time. Yeah. So, tell everybody about your show. That show. Oh, it's closed now. Oh, there's, oh. there's a second show that's um, interesting. I have two pieces in it. It's in Skokie. I don't remember the name of the place, but it's all about the old Chicago theaters. So there's paintings and photography about all the old movie houses, like, you know, the Chicago, Chicago Theater. The I, I, I did one of the Granada and the, Granada. the Riviera. And the Riviera. The, the Granada was a, was a, was a beautiful theater. Yeah. Uh, that was over on, on, um, uh, on Broadway. Broadway. And shit. I mean, not sure. No. No. Uh, Dumb. Right by Lloyd Old Stop. It was right by Lloyd Old Stop. Yeah, right there it is. That's it. Yeah, uh, it was a beautiful theater. I saw Empire Strikes Back there. Um, yeah, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, so you got that. You got that going. You continue to do photography. Yes. And yes. Uh, now let's get, to, let's get to the music. Okay. Because that's uh, something you're doing. And uh, I have been doing. For you've been doing for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you, you're you're with a band now. I started a band with um, a friend of mine who's a terrific guitar player, and um, it's, a, it's a rock band. It's called La Punco, and it's La Punco. La Punco. Okay. And um, it's it's just straight up rock. It's really terrific. We're loving it. We're writing songs together and recording them right now. We're in the recording our record, to be my third record. I have two. Other ones that are it's more kind of in the folk blues vernacular, but original songs. Um, for a long time, I was kind of a chanteuse, you know, like a balladeer, you like to say, uh, in French and Spanish and kind of foreign music, and I, you know, sung, have sung all over the world, really. Um, but now, but since I've been back in Chicago, this this idea for this rock band that I've had for ages finally has come to um, come to be, and I'm delighted. I'm so excited to be here for that reason. We're gonna get you on the show to talk about that. Play, yeah. a, bunch of, play a bunch of a bunch of your music. Yeah. Did, uh, did you start singing at a young age? 
I used to sing to myself for myself, to express <laughs> myself by myself. Right. <laughs> you know, like if I was blue or if I was happy or if I, you know, it was just a way I expressed it. But, and then, not till like 1998 did somebody ever sort of tap me on the shoulder and say, well, this French woman who owned like the coolest club in LA, I was living in LA, she goes, you're going to sing in my club. <laughs> I was like, really? Ha <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I was like, ready. So, you know, from then on, I just built this repertoire, kind of a very eclectic repertoire of songs um, that just went on and on. I did it in New York, I did it in Paris, and you know. That's I've fantastic. Been a long time. That's fantastic. Now, I noticed on your CDs you have a, you have a producer credit and everything. Yeah. Do you like working in the studio? Is it something you I enjoy? I love it. Yeah. Absolutely. What, what about you? Do you love it? it? Well, because you can do it till you get it right, kind of like movies. You know? Yeah. Um, you can make it, You can, I call it precision balladeering. You know, you can really create what you want to create and then have it on. I can be objective about my work, I think. I can step back and like really just kind of, you know. And then you stop, you, you get to a point where you, you're like, okay, I'm done. And you can walk away and then listen to it again and not cringe. <laughs> yeah. And writing songs, how's that process like for you? Um, it's a, I, I think it's one of the best things you can do with your time, is to write a three minute pop song, you know? It's like, it does, I mean, it can take as long as months and months, years even, or it can take like 20 minutes, um, depending on what you're writing about or how much it needs to get out and whatnot. Um, but then there it is forever again, you, you know? got this song that people can sing, they can dance to it, they can do anything to it. And and I think that's just a terrific uh, form of art form. Do you like playing out live as much as recording or is it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. I love everything about it. <laughs> everything about everything about the yeah. music. Uh, and and um, so uh, you, you're recording the, the current the rock album, uh -huh. you're recording it right now? Yeah. Yeah. And you're recording it here in Chicago. Yeah. Yep. And uh, what are you looking to release it? When we're done, I don't know. We're just doing it at our own pace, um, yeah. it's coming along. Um, yeah, that, that's the thing when you when you sort of doing your own thing, you can take as long as you need to take. Well, that's great, and I'm looking forward to it, and I'm Thank sure you. everybody in here is too. Yeah, um, I have a website. It's just lisazane.com, and there's a lot of music on it, and clips, and pictures, and whatever you might be interested in, and also whatever's happening, I'll post it there too. It's it's a it's it's a, kind of an archival thing. It's not you know. It's monolithic kind of thing, but you know, it's it's good fun. Um, also, if you go to a table, not only can you get a picture signed and a picture and all that cool stuff, but she's got both CDs oh, yeah, available at the at the uh, at the table, and uh, so you should you should pick those up. Uh, we're going to open up to uh, some, some questions. If you have some questions, um, in one second, I just wanted to mention. Um, uh, what, geez, what, I, I just went blank. Let's uh, let's let's get to it. Okay, what's your question? Uh, I was just wondering what it was like to work with Yaphet Koto. He was, a, he was eccentric. He was very eccentric, but you know, terrific actor, really present, you know. But he's, he told me he was the crown prince of Cameroon, and I believed him. <laughs> <laughs> An eccentric, but terrific. I mean, a legend, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Anybody else? Anyone? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right, whatever. Um, What's your favorite line that you've ever said in any of your roles? Like, not just Freddy's Dead, but... Favorite line that she Go said. back. For those of you, because you probably couldn't hear her, she said, what's Sorry. your favorite line from any movie you've ever done, not just Freddy's Dead? Oh, my gosh. Think hard. <laughs> All right, well, there was this in Bad Influence, you know, the, we were walking through this, you know, wild party and with, with all kinds of strange happenings and... Um, I guess it was the James Spader character who was, you know, by my side, and he was cringing, and I said, they're just people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an inclusive. I know what I wanted to ask you. Was, what, what kind of music did you listen to growing up? Oh, uh, a, lot a lot of musicals. A lot of the Beatles. Woo! <laughs> yeah, love, your parents were actors, too. Yeah. Love them, love them. Um, I listened to Liza Minnelli, who I love to this day. She makes me cry. Mm -hmm. Um, and Barbara Streisand, you know, singers, yeah. Frank Sinatra. Um, but then, you know, when I got to college, it was David Bowie and, you know, um, Blondie and, you know, all the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, what else did I like? I used to like to pretend to conduct 
Gershwin when I was a kid. I used to play Slaughter on 10th Avenue and you know, pretend I was conducting the orchestra. Right. That's what I did that when I was younger. And I used to pretend to be Ringo Starr on the phones. And a lot of lip syncing and play acting. You know? Right, right. Okay, that was, that was what I was going to ask you when we were talking about your music, because it influences. Anybody else? Yeah, go ahead. I was just wondering if you played live in that area somewhere. Uh, occasionally, like right now, now that we're recording, not so much. But um, but uh, Lapunku is playing at a, a, um, a thing called Yippie Fest on August 17th. 11 o'clock at night on August 17th. Um, it's a fairly new festival. It's only, I think it's only the third year. But um, so we're we're gonna have a rare um, a rare appearance. Uh, but we're hoping that once you know the record's done, then we're gonna un unleash then ourselves onto the world. Is it August 16th? Is it August 17th? August 17th. August 17th. But it's at the Prop Theater. It's at the Prop Theater, which is on Elston. Um, uh, it's a it's a pretty cool place. I used to hang out there. Yeah, we're gonna try it all over. Yeah, so, uh, anybody else? Okay, so besides the record, you were, oh, let me ask you this, as, a, as an actress, you know, from Chicago, who, who started out here and was auditioning and stuff like that, can you believe what Dick Wolf has done to this city? <laughs> Isn't it unbelievable? It's marvelous. <laughs> like, we were in one of his shows, right? I, yeah, just briefly, I, oh, you mean one of these ones? Yeah. Yeah, I did a small thing on Chicago, the one that got canceled, Chicago <laughs> The one. <laughs> They're all like mega hits. And yeah. like, not that one. It's really, how, how crazy, how different is it? I mean, between when you were you know, young and yeah, yeah, yeah. to what's going on now. No, it's terrific. They wanted to do this. Whole, I mean, I was talking to the producer when I was on set, and he said they want to do this whole sort of huge like box set called Chicago. And it's, you know, it's all about the heat. It's all about now, Chicago now, which is an amazing story to tell. It's it's incredible now, and that's, it, it, and Dick Wolf has kind of opened the door, so many other, so many other shows are shooting here now, as it's because of yeah. Dick Wolf, there's stuff from Fox that was shooting here, there's yeah, stuff from ABB or whatever it was was shot here, and they're hiring a lot of my friends, which that's makes good. me, which makes me, which makes me happy. Yeah. So, but I, it, I, it's just so different than like, back in like the 90s when people were trying to get gigs. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know, I kind of left right after high school, and never uh -oh. really came back, except to do a play or two at Goodman and whatnot, but like, never actually lived here. Since I was 18. Okay. Well, listen, uh, Lisa. It's so it was so great to catch up with you. Yeah. And sure. uh, and uh, and congratulations on, on all the success, and Thank we're looking you. forward to the album Thank you. Uh, being released. Lisa Zane. Everybody.